Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, so recently, I made a comparison video between the FreeSky uh, X9D to the FreeSky QX7 to the Eternity Evolution. And in that video, I briefly talked about receivers and which receivers I recommend for each transmitter. Uh, though that did leave a lot of questions because I left a lot of information out. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. I do have a comparison, a receiver comparison video for the FreeSky receivers already up. I'll leave you a link to that video. The only ones that are missing from that video is the XM and the XM Plus because these weren't around when I made that video. But I do have separate uh, setup and how-to videos for those receivers. I'll leave you links to that as well. As well as links to all of my playlists for these receivers. So all the information you need is going to be in the description. Like I said in the transmitter comparison video, when it comes to receivers for the Eternity Evolution, we are very limited and these are the three that I have used and are compatible with it. We have the Turingy IA6C which is what comes with it when you purchase it and then we have two FlySky receivers the X6B and A8S. So first let's cover the A8S. Uh, this is the smallest of the three. It only has one antenna. The range is greatly reduced. It's compatible of SBUS and IBUS and maybe even PPM. I I can't remember. I, I don't even remember, remember the last time I used PPM. I do not recommend this for your normal average size multi rotors. I only use this for my micro size builds, obviously. Uh, not only because of the reduced range, but because a lot of guys have had a lot of problems with this receiver. I won't go too far into this. I'll just, I'm going to leave you a link to the uh, RC Group forum page where they're talking about this. But basically the story goes, uh, this came out, many guys were having many problems with it, then they re released a V2 version of it, and uh, some guys say that that did make a difference, and it does perform much better, it, it stopped the brownouts that everyone was having. Some guys say that they only changed the name, but they didn't actually change anything with the receiver itself, so it, they say it still sucks. I don't know, like I said, I, I'm not going to risk it by putting this on one of my expensive builds. I only use it on these cheap micro size builds. As far as these two, these are the ones that I do recommend for your average normal size expensive multi rotors. As far as the IA6C, it has PPM, SBUS, and IBUS. There's normally a 4 pin JST connector here. You also have a 2 pin JST connector here to get voltage in your telemetry. Uh, once again, looking in the description, there's a video on how to get voltage in the telemetry using this connector. The antennas are soldered on. Some guys like that, some don't. Then as far as the X6B, uh, same thing, PPM, SBUS, and IBUS, as well as PWM. Also, uh, it still can get voltage in your telemetry. The antennas are pin-on. Uh, they use the typical UFL connectors. Between these two, I haven't noticed a difference in performance or range. I would say they're very similar to one another. Um, I, in fact, I'd say they're both equal. The X6B does have the benefit of having these mounting holes here. It's the same spacing that your flight controllers and PDBs use, so you can stack this on top of your flight controller if you want. This one actually does come much larger. I, I've made both of these as small as I can get them, but this one has four JST connectors. You've got one here, one here, a big one there, and one on the back side. So uh, as far as my recommendations, and just keep in mind, this is just my thoughts, my opinion. If you don't agree with it, then I mean, that's fine. <clears throat> but I would recommend the IA6C. The reason I say this is, uh, I mean, both of these once you depin de everything, they're both the same size. I don't care about the mounting holes. I, I don't mount my receivers that way. Uh, when it comes to antennas, I prefer that they be soldered on because the way I mount these, I never damage antennas. I mean, I, I do, but it's like once every two months, maybe. Um, and whenever I do solder on new antennas, it only takes me about three to four minutes, tops. Where with the UFL connectors, I actually do have these pop off in crashes way more often than I have to re replace these antennas so that's why I prefer this. Whenever you remove this JST connector the pin spacing is your typical pin spacing and it makes soldering these wires on much much easier where uh, if you choose to keep the JST connector on this one if you ever damage that harness or the wires then 
you have to find a new JST connector and not everyone has these small JST connectors just laying around where everyone has the, your typical three wire servo connectors laying around. Everyone has like a million of these somewhere. Uh, and then if you do choose to remove the connector, soldering the wires on are much, much harder because they're practically touching one another. So you have to have a very steady hand. But the biggest reason why I recommend the i6C over this is because uh, if you've ever used the Turnage Evolution, you'd know that it's limited to five models versus the FreeSky transmitters that can have up to, what, 60, something like that? But I also made a separate video talking about why that's not a problem. Matter of fact, I have more than five models, a lot more than that, but I actually only use two models in the Turnage Evolution. I have one set up for SBUS and one set up for IBUS, and I just switch you know, depending on which multi I'm using and flight controller and all that. But uh, my point is, j just watch that video. I explain everything way more in depth. But uh, long story short, switching models in the evolution actually is kind of a pain in the ass. It, it, I mean, it doesn't take that long. But what's even faster is just rebinding the receiver. And with this receiver, you don't have to hold the button down to bind it. You just set your evolution in the binding mode, plug in your LiPo battery, and it automatically binds, automatically connects, and then it even backs out of that screen for you. Where with this one, when you bind and uh, when you try to bind these, you have to hold the button down, so you can't do that. And where I mount these in my motors, I can't get to that button, so I can't use these because I I have way more than five motors. I mean, I could use these, but I either would have to only use five multiators or have to rebind it by holding the button down but then I gotta take the top plate off and it, it, that's a serious pain in the ass where I have this on practically almost all my multiators at this point and uh, you know I, I could go out with seven of them in one day hit the bind button plug in the lipo and I'm good to go and that's pretty much gonna do it so uh, I know this wasn't the greatest video but we really didn't have that many products to to choose from not not that many receivers uh but just take it for what it's worth hope this helps somebody out thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon